Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of What's Brewing Every Thursday. Dear friends, patrons of Z Krishna Chetty Group of Jewelers, today we are presenting you with a session that is titled History, Care for Gems, Exotic Gems and Care for Gems and Jewelry. On this session, we have kept your mics on mute to keep your privacy. When we open for questions after the presentation, we will unmute all mics so you can ask question. You may use your question and answer button at any time to post your question and comments and we will try to take them up before we close the session. On What's Brewing web series, we have with us our managing director and director, Dr. Vinod Highgrave, Mr. Chaitanya V. Korta, and Mrs. Triveni V. Along with speakers, Ms. Babita, myself, Vishwanathan, and our customer relationship team, Ms. Jamuna, and Lokesh Vajadha, and their team. Before we get on to this webinar, I wish to recall a line from the Smithsonian Paul speech, during which he said, fine minerals should be treated as antiques, as in recognition to their historic value and beauty as objects. May I request Ms. Babita to take over to begin this session, to give you an insight. I am Babita. Welcome to What's Brewing at Sri Krishnaya Chetty Group of Dwellers. I begin my presentation. There are more lovely gemstones than not only diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. The mystery with rare stones is that most of the people are unaware of these gemstones. Only true consa or collectors know. And they collect these from time to time. Keep in mind that rare does not mean expensive. You can own some really rare gems in very lovely colors at very affordable prices. Let's take a look at some of these rare and exotic mind-boggling gemstones. We'll try to start from A to Z. So first we have agate, a unique gemstone that is actually a crypto-crystalline form of quartz. This essentially means that this is an amalgam of minute quartz crystals, which are packed tightly together. This allows this magnificent gemstone to display vibrant colors in different patterns and also forms, giving birth to a multitude of sub-varieties, including picture agate, canvas agate, and we also have a rare and multicolored iris agate. Next, coming to Alexandrite. Alexandrite is one of the rarest gemstone nature produces. Alexandrite change color, often described by gem enthusiasts as green by day and red by night. Alexandrite is a very rare color change variety of the mineral called chrysoperyl. Let's have a look at a video. Hello, my name is Shreya Skota, and I am an executive director at Sri Krishnaya Chetty & Sons. Today, I would like to talk to you about a very rare and exclusive gemstone called Alexandrites. Now, Alexandrites display a very unique characteristic called color change. And what I mean by color change is that the stone actually changes color from a raspberry red in incandescent light to a vivid emerald green in fluorescent light. And it's this unique characteristic that gives Alexandrites its romantic description, emerald by day and ruby by night. Alexandrites were first discovered in the Ural Mountains of Russia and named after the revered Tsar Alexander II. The highest quality Alexandrites come from Russia and they hold the standard for all other color change gemstones in the world. However, the supply from this source has reduced dramatically in today's, in today's times. Today, most of your Alexandrites come from Myanmar, Africa, Sri Lanka, and even India. 
Now this is a very unique specimen that we have. This alexandrite changes from a purplish reddish hue in yellow light to a vivid bluish green in white light. This alexandrite displays a 60 to 70 percent color change, which is very high for alexandrites. Most alexandrites in today's market would display only a 20 to 30 percent color change, and even those can command top prices. Here at C. Krishnaya Chetty and Sons, we make alexandrites available to you. Thank you for your time. Coming to amber, the Jurassic gem. Amber, which is fossil, fossilized pine tree resin, is ancient and valuable, like an antique from natural history. The desire for amber is nothing new. You will find an exotic designs collection of amber from the Baltic region or Russia, currently available at Sri Krishnaya Chetty group of dwellers. Amethyst, the most striking representative of the quartz family is amethyst. The Greek word amethystos, which means not intoxicated in translation. Thank you, Babita. Now, just going to the next one, the ametrine. Uh, ametrine is a variety of this bicolored quartz, and they have a zoning of amethyst and citrine. This nature has given us a surprise by having created these bicolored stones. Sometimes, Amethyst and citrines are combined together in the same crystal of quartz. This bicolor yellow and purple quartz gemstones are thus called as ametrine. And when you look at ametrine, it is you have two colors at the price of one. These ametrines are very rare, and these ametrines can be beautifully crafted. They can be laser crafted. In fact, into the most uh, they are usually in the rectangular shape. They can be shaped in any other forms also. It is appealing of a person of an amethyst and citrine, and shown here is an expertly cut ametrine at CKC. Ammonite. Ammonites coexisted along with dinosaurs. This iridescent fossil shell are from squid like creatures, which is found in southern Alberta, Canada. And also silver regions of Russia. Their brilliant colors enhanced uh, Native Americans who wore them to bring good luck while hunting buffalo. This is not for sale price at CKC. Using Mexican opals is a striking design by a Swiss designer. Coming next to Aventurine. Aventurine is said to be the luckiest of all crystals. It is also known as the stone of opportunity, which goes hand in hand with what it is used for. Green aventurine is said to bring luck to anyone who not only wears it, but is near it. Looking over to aquamarine. Aquamarine together with emeralds and beryls belong to the beryl group. It is a Latin origin signifying water of the sea because of its sea water color. Aquamarines are usually a clean, eye-clean stone. The inclusions cannot be seen with the naked eye. They have a great luster and transparency. This aquamarine, the largest aquamarine of the gem, has been found in 1910 in the Minas Geria, Brazil. Now on the screen, you could probably see the real picture and the image, what is displayed over and the jewel at Sri Krishna Chetty group of jewelers. The green color aquamarine that you happen to see here is more rarer as shown on this. Aquamarine together with beryl. This aquamarine that we happen to see is a blue, is a cool color. There is something warm and breezy about aquamarines also that makes it as a perfect for the summer day as well as the winter evening. As a gem, aquamarine is accessible, beautiful, and wearable. 
Aquamarine is a greenish blue to bluish green variety of the mineral species of barrels. Green colored aquamarine is more rarer. Taking to the next stone, which is called as the azurite. The azurite is a transparent stone. It's a soft blue colored stone, gemstone found generally in copper ore mines. It is also known as chest leaf and is believed to revive stress and enhance creativity. The name azurite is derived from the Persian word lazvart, which means distinctive blue color. The azurite stone is also called as the stone of heaven. Now talking about benetoid, benetoid is a non-porous gemstone and is the official gemstone of state of California. It is without a doubt amongst the rarest gemstone in the world. Benetoid is also known as blue diamond. For those who do not wish to have a blue sapphire, the best alternate is the benetoid. Friends, this is Vinod Highgreave speaking with you. I'll speak about the beryl. Beryl is the name of a mineral. From this mineral comes variety of different gemstones. For example, the emerald is from the mother mineral called beryl. Aquamarine is also from the mother called beryl. What happens with gemstones is that trace elements of uh, you know, uh, nature get into the gemstones while they're formed thousands and millions of years ago. Actually, not thousands, but millions of years ago. That gives about, it's very, very trace amounts. It's like very, very small quantities that makes a change in the color. That's how something becomes green, something becomes blue, something becomes red, yellow, and so on. Out of all of the barrels that you see, the emerald, of course, is the most famous, the most coveted stone in the whole world. Other than diamonds, rubies, and emeralds, beryl is one of those minerals that are produced in South America and other parts of the world, including Pakistan, the Himalayas, and the Rajasthan region of India. There are six well-known beryl types. Each one of them is because of the distinctive color. It's the color that makes colored stones so attractive. Emerald and aquamarine are the most sought after out of all of them, but there is also a yellow beryl, which is also very, very beautiful. However, beryls are a little soft in nature. They can break if you drop them. So some of the gemstones that Vishwanath and Babita have spoken to you about are hard, some of them are soft, some of them are brittle, some of them are tough. Each one of them has a distinct, dis distinct character. For example, when we say hard, it means you can't scratch them, but if it could be brittle. Sometimes it's tough and it is hard. So each one, if you look at the, uh, the slides that we are showing you on the right hand side at the bottom, you have a little description of how affordable they are or how expensive they are. And it gives you an indication of each of these gemstones. And some of the prices of some of the pieces that we already have, or maybe we had earlier, but it was sold, would be there as an indicated price. So some of these fine beryl specimens, the, em the emeralds, for example, can go very, very expensive. For example, uh, a 20 carat, 50 carat, 150 carat, 120 carat emeralds are uh, coming in from either from uh, Zambia or from um, uh, the South American sources, they can be quite expensive. There is also something called the Parashair mines in the Himalayas, which are very rare because you can't access them easily. You can't get there every day. Therefore, it's only three months or four months in a year. Therefore, these are very priced. So uh, I'd like to, um, you know, kind of uh, request you while um, Babita and Vishwanath are speaking about the gemstones, also look at the pieces that are on the right side and also read. The, the price points which might be there just for information for you, as well as uh, whether they are porous or non-porous. Porous means, that means you cannot immerse them in water, you cannot use ultrasonic cleaners, you cannot, you have to be a little more careful. Uh, non-porous uh, stones, of course, they are tougher and they can be cleaned more easily. And some of the emeralds need some oiling once a year. You can either buy, buy a little 
bottle of uh, oil from us at our stores, or you can use uh, simple oils, odorless oils from your home. We will speak more about it later. Go on, Babita. So this is Vishwanath, your game. Vishwanath, Vishwanath, um, go on. Now, I would like to talk something about this bloodstone. This bloodstone is a dark green variety of a family called chal chalcedony. This is also known as a heliotrope. In Greek, means to turn the stone. This is a natural stone, and this stone has a solid green body color. It has also got light spatters of sharply contrasting and clearly visible blood red mineral dots. This blood red dots are actually an inclusion of the iron oxides. Going to the next the family. Before, Vishwana, before you can take, there's a little question. Maybe yes. we can answer that question. Uh, there's a um, uh, question from Satish Babu. Alexandrite oh. stone cost per carat, and can anyone wear it? All right. The, the Alexandrites uh, are very rare. They color change, as our executive director on the video explained to you. They can be 30% change and 70% change and so on. The color change between... Uh, daylight and you know sunlight uh, or sunlight and in, in, inside lights so therefore that amount of change will change will change the, uh, the price of the emerald can anyone wear it yes almost everybody who loves the moody colors of the alexandrite for sure you can wear them uh, Vishnath, continue. thank you sir now just talking about the sapphires the sapphire has been the traditional birthstone for the month of september Sapphire is one of the most powerful natural gemstone. This is also from the family or the mineral corundum. The British Queen and Princess Diana are the best ambassadors of the blue sapphire. This was given as an engagement ring to Diana by Prince Charles. The ring consisted of 14 diamonds surrounding in a 12 carat oval blue Ceylon sapphire. To tell you can, I, up, can I add something here, uh, Vishwanath? Sure, sir. Uh, blue sapphires are one of the most beautiful gemstones. Of course, no gemstone is less beautiful. However, blue, blue sapphire has a certain appeal. It has a worldwide appeal. Even in India, the people love the stone. I don't know how many thousands of stones that people come and pick up from our, you know, Krishna Chetty stores uh, in Bangalore. The one that is here, which is shown to you here, is really a very unique stone. Uh, it's of Kashmir origin. Kashmir has been, you know, uh, you know, we, we mine from Kashmir only again very few months in a year and very small production because of the inaccessibility of the Himalayan mountains and uh, the snow and the ice. And therefore here, and of course, not to mention the war between India and Pakistan always going on, this particular specimen is really something very beautiful. The picture doesn't do as much justice as when you see it first uh, physically. Well, I can try and show you. This is the stone that we have here. It's an outstanding stone. It's one of those collector's pieces. Uh, go on, Vishnath. I, I leave it at that at this point of time. A little surprise has been created there. I think so, sir. Then next, going on to the... Uh... The blue zircon. The blue zircon is a blue colored variety of the natural zircon gemstones. This popular gemstone is recognized for its brilliant luster and good transparency. To tell you something about this zircon, is zircons come as colorless stones or they could be in different colors. You can find them in different colors also. And the one in February 2014, an electric blue grain of zircon was found in the Jack Hills of Western Australia. Carefully testing has revealed that this tiny zircon dated back to 4.4 billion years, making it one of the oldest mineral on the planet. Friends, I'd like to speak about carnelian for you. Carnelian, uh, a word about these wonderful names. Aren't you finding them very unusual? The names are different. Each one is so unique. They come from the most exotic parts of the globe. Um, some of them are, uh, you know, trips of uh, adventure because you have to go through the forests uh, in the South America to 
If you go to Myanmar, I'll talk about uh, rubies later. Now, these are some things that are very, very exciting. I mean, nature produces all of these. We have to look after nature very closely. Um, carnelian is one of those beautiful brownish orange toned gemstones. They are not porous, they're very hard, they're very good. They, you can wear them every day. They have a lovely color which will go with a lot of your dresses um, from the yellows uh, and even almost any color of your clothing, the carnelian goes very well. Uh, this is also a quartz variety. Quartz is a, is a mineral that produces a huge number and therefore there is no issue in uh, you know, picking up a huge number. They're not very expensive. They're quite uh, affordable. The name comes from a Latin origin. A lot of things come from either Sanskrit or Latin. And Carnelian believed to be named after the red orange uh, cherry. And, and this actually has the feeling that it increases the confidence and the strength of people. Um, over to you, Babita. Talking about cat's eye, cat's eye phenomenon gems are rarely seen because every cat's eye stone is cut from a piece of rough that must be studied and oriented properly before cutting. An inventory of cat's eye gems are available at Sri Krishnaya Chetty group of dwellers for a gem that suits your color preference and size. Coming next to crystal. Crystal is uh, one of the I, most... Sure. Can I, uh, um, Babita, if I can just pause there. There are a couple of questions. Sure, sir, sure. Um, it's about the blue sapphire. How how uh, can anybody wear it? I think gemstones are things of nature. Therefore, you can anyone can wear any stone. Of course, there is a feeling sometimes, especially the blue sapphire, can be sometimes good for you and sometimes not good for you. For that, if you are feeling so, then you know you could consult one of our in-house astrologers. Uh, who can help you read your horoscope in India? We call that uh, it's reading of the birth date. So therefore, you can get a recommendation or an advice on that whether you can or you cannot. But keep in mind at Krishna Chetty, what we do for Blue Sapphire is if you buy one, you do not have to be stuck with it. If for some reason in one week or ten days you are not happy, you can always give it back for a full one hundred percent refund with no questions asked. This is something that blue sapphires that we do all the time. And um, um, I think the second question is, uh, yes, that's the same thing. The appointments are possible. If you wish to consult, you can book through the web website, ckcjewelers.com, and you could get an appointment anytime and at your convenience. Um, go ahead, uh, Babita. Yeah, thank you, sir. Crystal. Crystal are one of the most popular gems on earth. The transparent and colorless variety of quartz is still known as rock crystal. Rock crystal has often been used in jewelry, particularly carved pieces like this that you can see on your screen. That is Ananta Padmanabha Swami. Well, now, get just going over next to these garnet. You are all aware that there are about uh, 20 garnet categories and out of which only those five has been used in the jewelry. This garnet has a huge number of or a surprising number of hues even if red does call, the continue to be its principal color. This gemstone group is particularly in one which gives new impulse to the world of jewelry today. The five kinds of Garnets that we usually use are the pyrope, the almondine, the pesatine, the grossular, and the anthrodite. So here we have a few of this, the rhodolite, the almondine, the mandarin, are the names that are given to various types of natural garnets. The noble garnets are usually wonderful. These, we are talking about a garnet called as the mandarin garnet, which is an orangish color garnet, and that has become world famous. Unfortunately, in the mines, the mines have been closed. It was in Namibia and it is only a few years that until it has been exploited. The best is the garnets and India has been a source of these kinds of garnets. Yeah, can I add something here? Uh, sure, sir. Sure. Uh, if you can go back to the garnets slide. Garnets are a very versatile gemstone, a mineral. There is, it's a big family and to master 
the entire set of garnets that are available in the world is very difficult nobody gets hold of all of the garnets because there's a small production and the people around the world connoisseurs of gemstones buy them very much they they are from orangish to brown to reddish to green um they are very very beautiful each one provided they are cut very well for example this is one particular necklace which is there on your screens at this point of time uh this is another very unusual gemstone um the garnet and you know sometimes you wonder how nature produces the same kind with the different elements and creates a change in the colors um and this is the what stone for january so it's a lovely lovely stone um a gun a gun this one yeah coming next to onyx onyx seals were very popular with the romans who carved the pattern of the seal in negative relief to give a raised point onyx is carvable onyx is the birthstone for leos and the anniversary gemstone for the 7th year of marriage um babita i'd like to add something on the onyx part sure sir onyx has is a versatile again a wonderful uh, versatile gemstone one is you can facet them one is you can kind of puff it on the top just to give it a puff top look sometimes you can even carve them this particular piece that you see on the right hand side of your screens is is a musical instrument it's from a musical instrument collection that we did some year some some time ago i think about a few years ago we did this uh, it's got a black onyx it's not uh, anything that is artificial they're genuinely gold diamonds and of course there's a black onyx um you know uh, uh, part of the construction of the piece these were also made as cufflinks they were made as buttons they were we made a lot of these for the royal families of india and we did a, a huge number of onyx including when king tutankhamun uh, you know the, the in the pyramids when the tutankhamun's pyramid was uh, uh, you know uh, discovered they found certain um, uh, artifacts and that became a rage the world over and krishna chetty made a lot of those egyptian jewelry in those days using onyx black onyx uh, and green onyx uh, and created uh, the rage that was there in europe especially in the french jewelers krishna chetty was part of the whole uh, system in 19 in the early 1900s and we did that same uh, you know reconstructions of the egyptian jewelry go ahead all right i would like to speak to you about this opal i would call it the queen of all gems opals are like a rainbow inside the gemstone if you look closely to this i have i have a piece here you see the little picture over there and i'll try and see if this camera can capture a closer view of it can you see the colors that are there inside you you can i'm not using any artificial light here so you can see all the lovely silica crystals inside these is what makes the this is a white opal a uh, black opal is something that's extremely beautiful it's actually called black but it's actually blue black green inside and darker than than this and those would be very coveted by collectors in fact some of them can go really high in prices um it's because of its rarity they come from Uh, australia most of the time it's uh, you know 95% of the world's opal is mined in australia until such time uh, it is possible in fact our, our director who spoke on the video earlier he actually um, uh, held in his own hands the world's largest specimen of opal and at some point of time you might find his picture in one of our showrooms somewhere in 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 one of our showrooms but some of them are very interesting um then i would like to speak to you about another kind of opal which is the mexican fire opal mexico makes uh, not makes but uh, you know nature produces in the mexican mines this kind of a stone it's a it doesn't it look like fire it is actually almost like fire so this is mexican fire opals they cut from the rough from mexico they have a this very lovely red orange yellow background and one of a kind stone again you can facet them you can cobbish on them and they make lovely jewelry except that please keep in mind that i can't give you 20 of these stones at one time you may have to wait for orders 
we, if you uh, need a, need something like this, we, we have to wait to collect the rough and cut them and uh, make jewelry. So it could be a six month, a nine month matter in such exquisite, exotic uh, stones of the of nature. Back to you, Babita. Talking about pearls. Pearls are organic gems created when an oyster covers a foreign object with a beautiful layers of natural nacre. Comparable in price to real estate as thousands of oysters had to be searched for just one pearl. They are rare because they were created only by chance. At Sri Krishnaya Chetty group of dwellers, we have taken a definite step to stop offering cultured pearls which are suspected to original from China. Pictured here is our awarded winning piece that was awarded by the Cultured Pearl Association of America. If I may add uh, Babita on the pearls part. Sure, sir. Um, we specialize quite a lot on pearls. There are different kinds of pearls. Now, the, the most expensive pearls are the most rarest pearls. I'd like not to call them expensive, but they are the rarest. Uh, they are the ones that have no hand of man involved in its making. So therefore, that is naturally produced in the Gulf region, uh, the, 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 the Basra region, which is the Gulf uh, uh, oceans, the seas of the Gulf. There, what happens is naturally um, oysters produce for not from now, but for over a thousand years and used to be the finest pearls that were made see how the environment uh, affects us because of the wars in the gulf uh, and the pollution of the water there is no more pearls produced there of recent times the gulf governments over there have been cleaning it up they've been using a lot of money to clean up the oceans and there now oysters are beginning and they're slowly beginning to come back but it's going to take time other a region is the venezuelan um, uh, in South America, there again, because it's pure water, it's unadulterated water, we get some good pearls. Japanese shores have wonderful pearls because they're again unadulterated. Whereas the South China seas are very uh, tumultuous seas. They're always, if you see, there's always a typhoon going on around Hong Kong or South China. Therefore, a pearl, oil, pearl farms do not last long. They, the typhoons come and wash away all the farms over there. So it's, it's extremely difficult. However, China has been in the eastern region of China uh, of the recent times. They have begun a recent meaning last 20 years, uh, two decades. But in the last decade, they've begun very high production of pearls. But what they are doing is instead of spending uh, anywhere between nine months to 18 months to cultivate the pearl in the sea, they are doing it between three months and six months. and uh, pushing all the pearls into the world markets. That's what's happening is that the nacre, thickness of the nacre on the pearl is very, very thin and they don't last long. If you look at the European history the, 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 and, the, and the Maharajas of India, they all wore lots of pearls, even the Nizam of Hyderabad pearls, the, the uh, Gondal, the pearls, the, uh, uh, the Gaikwads, the pearls. All of them had lovely pearls collection and all of them came from the Basra region, the Gulf region. The Chinese were never there. Japanese cultured the pearls first time, but they do it very responsibly. Therefore, today now with this COVID pandemic now, we, are, we have taken a very strong decision at Krishnaya Chetty not to import Chinese pearls. In fact, we are so strong that whatever we have, we will consume and we will, you know, we have to consume what we have on stock because we normally have a large pipeline of commitments. So we will finish that. But then our procurement going from now onwards will not have Chinese pearls. But you will get, hopefully, more Indian pearls from the Kerala region, uh, more of the Gulf pearls from Vietnam, from South America, we hope, and Japanese, of course. And of course, South Sea pearls, the Tahitian pearls, those are beautiful pearls. These will be replacing, although China is less expensive, I think we have a duty at this time after the COVID reason that we will actually stop importing Chinese pearls. Uh, over to you, Babita. All right. I, I'd like to speak about this wonderful green gem. It's called Perido. The T is silent, so it's called Perido. And absolutely fresh. There is not another green gem that is as beautiful, so deep and so saturated. 
and so reflective. In fact, it is said that if you find a peridot in the ground somewhere in the world, there's a good chance that you will find a diamond below that. Because peridots are coming from a mineral called olivine. And this olivine is olive green. So this is olive, olive green. So if you, the South African uh, miners, when they first discovered, discovered peridots, and from that they realized that the diamonds were below that. Of course, um, there's another story of how ants go around there. And so you find a lot of ants, they could be diamonds. These are telltale signs of nature because they kind of, there's a chemistry that is going on. So peridot is one of those finest gemstones. This particular pair uh, was cut in Germany for us. It's an absolutely meticulously cut. Your dimensions are perfect. Your faceting is perfect. If you see the reflection on the, on the stone, you will find both the stones absolutely perfectly matched. This kind of precision cutting is something that's not easily available. Um, some of them are very beautiful. Uh, ancient Egyptians called them the gem of the sun and believed it glowed even in the dark, but it does not glow in the dark, but they thought that it would glow in the dark. It was so beautiful. Large, highly saturated peridots can be very rare and very, very seldom that we even we uh, put our hands on it. Um, and, and I'd like you to continue uh, over to rhodochrosite. Rhodochrosite is a very unusual gemstone. These are find, uh, found in uh, copper mines, uh, but also some of them are trees that fallen in the Russian, uh, Siberian Russian area over millions of years. These trees kind of become uh, replaced with mineral because it's there in the, in, it's fallen and it's there buried in the earth. And these become uh, fossilized. So this, this is a rhodochrosite. It becomes very hard. You cannot cut this so easily. It is very difficult to cut because it's millions of years of hardness. And this tree uh, becomes fossilized and it's replaced with this kind of a, a mineral. And this becomes so beautiful. You can see almost it's like a tree trunk. This is exactly what happens. I have, a, I have another specimen here, which is very similar. Of course, this we are not selling because it's one of those fine specimens. And these are the kind of collections that you do even sometimes you, you collect these to showcase on your, on, in your showcases or in your uh, mantle in the houses and in your estates and offices because they're so beautiful. And of course, we make them into lovely necklaces. This is limited supply, but, but there is uh, beauty in its, in, its, uh, in, its, in its beautifulness of it. Um, Babita, go on. Yeah. Coming to rubellite, the rubellite is a transparent gemstone from the colorful family of tourmalins. Its color can vary from red to violet to pale and dramatic pink. Its name comes from the Latin word rubellus, which means reddish. Rubellite is also believed to strengthen friendship bonds and to promote sympathy and empathy towards others. Oh, this is an amazing combination of nature. If you look here, there is a, what you see as red on the, in the picture is ruby. What's behind is zoisite. It's a green mineral. Now, both of them are formed in nature. Now, we don't have a choice how they are formed. It's just the fact that they're formed like that. So what we do is to try and visualize how we can create something interesting. And therefore, we've created this. This is actually a Ram Darbar. Uh, in, uh, I think I have, I have it here. Um, you see, this is a Ram Darbar. You know, it's, it's an amazing uh, uh, carving and it's quite hard. This ruby is very, very beautiful and hard. And so is the zoisite. You can see the carvings on the back. We are able to carve them very, very beautifully. Now, this is, this, I mean, it's not us, honestly. It's nature giving us these opportunities. So these are the kind of things that uh, ruby on zoisite, as we call it. Uh, again, a very rare gemstone. We get some. We have to select out of all of the mines that produce them, and then we we kind of make them into carved, uh, um, you know, objects of art. Um, the attention of the, uh, the colors is so strong that it it lets you look at it again once more. That's the kind of attractivity that it has. It has 
little crystals of various other minerals as well. At one time, it was also known as anilite, but anyway, we call it ruby on zoisite, which is the right name. Now, I would take you to the next one, which is the rubies. The most famous, I think nobody not know ruby. Everybody knows what a ruby is. If they know diamonds, they know rubies. If they know rubies, they know diamonds. Now, rubies are India's favorite gemstone, especially South India. For some reason, the skin tones of South Indian skin go so well with rubies that rubies are, have been worn for generations, for hundreds of years. Um, we cut this particular style of ruby. Uh, can you take it back? Yeah. Um, this particular style of ruby is a cobachon ruby. It means it's curved on the top. It's, and it's also curved at the bottom. Uh, what happens there is that when the light falls on it, it's got a billowy effect. Uh, it's curved inside and curved on the top, which is very rare. It's, a, it's more a trade secret. Not many people do it. If you look around in the country or in the world, you will not find this. This is something which we call, by Krishnaya Chetty standards, we call them Kundala Velai. Kundala Velai means it is a, it is a South Indian equivalent, um, where the North Indian used to have has been making something called Kundan. We have been making that for uh, over 500 years in South India. This is called Kundala Velai. We started shaving off the ruby at the bottom and keep it because the, the light reflection is very, very beautiful. It's subtle. This is the kind of pieces that are very strong heritage. And I think our strength lies in the high quality. All of these rubies actually come from Myanmar. Uh, and, uh, uh, other than a brief period when Myanmar was under a military rule, we could not uh, import them. But now, fortunately, um, the government has changed in the last five years or seven years, and we're beginning to import them as well. But they go very well. They're part of the Corundum family, which is the same that produces sapphires as well. But ruby is uh, when it is a when a ruby is red, it is a ruby. When a Corundum is red, it is a ruby. When Corundum is slightly pinkish, we call it pink sapphire. So pink sapphire and rubies are the same, only the color difference. This is uh, the, another example of a very strong red. It's very hard. All rubies are very hard. They are the second most hardest after diamonds. Therefore, they last um, hundreds of years. Um, the, again, it comes from a Latin word um, for red. And it's, it's uh, the most beautiful stone would be the pigeon's blood red. Because the pigeon's blood apparently has the most beautiful red. And this is akin to that. And these are few of them that we will have. They also come from Burma. All right. I would Hello. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Hello. My name is Shreya Skota, and I am an executive director at C. Krishnaya Chetty and Sons. The most common inclusions are needles. This rutilated quartz clearly illustrates what needles are because it has large, eye visible rutile needles penetrating its core. However, the needles in this quartz are large, stubby, and unoriented in nature. Now, sometimes, and only under the exact circumstances, do we have thousands of fine, consistently oriented needles within a gem. And we call this silk. Now what happens when we have silk is that light reflects off these needles in particular directions, and this results in a stunning play of light. This light blue Ceylon star sapphire displays a well-centered, high contrast, six-rate star. Stars also do occur in 4 and 12 rays. However, not all star sapphires are lucky enough to have such a well-centered star. For instance, this star ruby displays a star that is way off its center. And some people wouldn't even know it's a star ruby until after they cut the stone and that would usually reduce its value dramatically. However, 
This particular piece is part of our estate collection and is an antique. Now all antiques at C. Krishnaya Chetty and Sons come with their own certificate of authenticity and this ring had its last record dated in about 1950. One of the biggest challenges that cutters face is which direction to cut the stone because they would have their ruby rough or their sapphire rough and they may not even know it's a star. So what cutters would do in the olden days is take a single drop of water and put it on the stone and they would do this in all directions and what they would realize is that in one particular direction they would see a star appearing on the dome of the water and that's when they would know it's a star ruby or a star sapphire and they would cut it in that direction. Now another thing to be wary of are synthetics. Yes, synthetics do exist in the marketplace. So if you do have a star ruby or a star sapphire or any star gem, do visit our gemologists and we can help identify and value your stone. Here at C. Krishnaya Chetty and Sons, we make star rubies and star sapphires available to you. Thank you. Well, did you know that uh, the sunstone also has a display of asterism? The sunstone also produces an asterism of a four ray star, and it is also known as the star sunstone. This gorgeous sunstone is a member of the Fieldspur family and is named for its warm shades of gold, orange, red, and brown that sparkles like the sun. Sunstone gets its name from the bright flashes of light within the stone produced by tiny plate-like inclusions of copper and hematite. According to the native legends, a great warrior was wounded by an arrow and his blood dripped onto the stones. The spirit of this warrior was carried into the stone and colored them beautiful tones of red, while other imbuing the gem with sacred, sacred powers. This gem, the stars, the sunstone that we are talking about, are sometimes a translucent or a transparent field spur, which produces the ring that you happen to see on the right, is a beautiful one, well faceted rectangular stone, a transparent uh, sunstone, which is also available there on the screen that you could see. And these sunstones, sometimes when they are opaque, they are cut into cabochons and are polished into beads and are being used for necklaces, bracelets, and other articles. Coming to tiger's eye. Tiger eye is a very popular quartz gemstone that displays a chatonate. Cat's eye visual effect when a polished stone is moved back and forth. Hence, the quartz is replaced by crocidolite, a form of asbestos in nature, a variety rare natural phenomenon. The mineral crocidolite that contains iron dissolves in quartz over millions of years, giving its yellowish brown color. CKC specializes in fine tiger's eye gemstones carvings. Um. Babita, I'm going to a little bit about the tiger's eye. Sure. Uh, friends, I must tell you, this is a very unusual phenomena. One gemstone nature forms because it's a millions of years deep under the ground. That particular stone undergoes a metamorphosis. And what happens is parts of the stone gets replaced by another mineral inside the stone. That's what tiger's eye is a quartz getting replaced by crocidolite, another mineral. Crocidolite, by the way, is a kind of asbestos, the, 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 the source of asbestos, but then it's, it's millions of years old. It's absolutely hard. You can't break them. And that's how we make them into such lovely um, carvings here. You can see a lovely Ganesha idol that we've carved. It's approximately about, um, about uh, I think, about a foot in height. Go on, Babita. Uh, before well, that, I think is... there is a uh, question, sir, in the chat. Yeah. Yes, I, Can you I, that? I, in the chat. I, oh, yes. Okay. All right. Let, uh, there are a couple of questions. I, let me ask. Let me, uh, there is from Maitri Shankar. 
there seems to be a wide range of and variety of colored stones artificial versus man uh, artificial and man made uh, how does one know what to buy or invest in or has more value if you will yes uh, thank you for the wonderful question man has never stopped trying to imitate nature i think from time immemorial man has always wanted to replicate nature even today i think man wants to make gold they've not been successful nature has always outwitted them but in some cases man has tried scientists have tried in various institutes research institutes they have tried to replicate nature some of them have been successful some of them not successful after decades and decades of work the only way that you could um, know for sure is to be well i'm not wanting to sell you anything but i'm just trying to tell you that you have to be careful where you're buying it from uh, if there is an ethical operation you will be able to get something good uh, but ask the question is this real when you get a bill find out if the bill discloses or prints the name of the gemstone there even if possible try to see if the origin of the stone is there what treatment it has undergone most of the time at krishna hct of course we have a system where we will all our bills produce they will tell you if the origin and the treatment that is there and what is the gemstone without a gemstone name we will not we'll never say something that is just a stone there is a very clear stone unless it's man made like um, something made in a factory and it's very inexpensive then it would be called as red stones green stones etc but otherwise most natural stones would always have a name attached to them to it on the bill if you do that practice you will always have a good collection of jewelry the next question i have is shobha hegde mr shobha hegde your question is how to differentiate ruby rubellite spinel for the common people i well it's going to be um a challenge for everybody but those who are clients i mean even if you were to keep looking at our gemstones on and on you will find there is a very distinct color difference between a rubellite and a ruby a uh, ruby is far more redder a rubellite is far less redder now if there was a ruby which was as clear as a rubellite and as dark as a ruby then it would set a world record for price and it would only be sold to the finest collectors in the world how do you find out a spinel from a ruby a little more difficult there are inclusions inside a spinel under magnification when we look you will find certain inclusions that only are found in spinels will not be found in rubies for example uh, spinels are closer to diamonds in in internal structure whereas rubies are completely a different structure so these are the things that we look for when we when we sell you a stone or when we make a piece of jewelry in it um i i hope that answers a question there's one more question some alexandrites are greener under fluorescent light and some are blue uh, j george yes does that depend on the origin synthetic alexandrite shares same chemical and physical properties with natural alexandrite how can synthetic alexandrites be identified okay as i said scientists and research people are always looking to replicate nature but what happens is research as much as the scientists try to replicate nature they are also collecting samples from man made uh, laboratories or man made um, factories to uh, to kind of uh, research how the man made will differ so there's documentation on it it's a very scientific way of looking at spectroscopy um sometimes the physical and the chemical properties are the same so they could be same iron they could be chromium they could be um, the crystal structure could be same but then keep in mind one of the finest instruments that the world has produced came right from here bangalore with the indian institute of science which uh, which was the cd raman the nobel prize india's first nobel prize winner he created what is a raman spectroscope even today we use raman spectroscopes very expensive um, equipment but that identifies most gemstones even today after so many decades hats off to mr raman he was an incredible genius for our jewelry industry um i i hope yeah. that answers the question okay go on yeah um all right um i'm coming to the topaz 
Yes, topaz is one of the most beautiful stones. It's one of my favorite stones. And there are a lot of favorites that I have. Topaz is one of them. This is, I must tell you, there are lots of topazes are sold. It's very similar to a lot of BBS diamonds that are sold. It's also very similar to a lot of Scotch whiskey that is sold. A lot of Scotch whiskey is sold in the world, but more, more sold than produced in Scotland. Okay, So similarly, topazes are mis mistakenly sold, um, uh, but actually what they're selling could be citrine. Citrine is quartz. Mineral of topaz is a completely independent mineral. It is as good as uh, a human being and an animal. I mean, it's as very, very distinctively different. So topazes are very unique. They're very small supply. They come from Brazil most of the time, the finest of them. In fact, it just so happens that we've, we've been able to lay our hands on this particular specimen here, um, which has just come in from the Bangalore customs uh, right now. I mean, it's, we, we, we placed the order for, from Brazil about before the COVID times in January, but it's just come in right now because of the flights that were not available. So these are lovely, lovely stones. These are called the imperial topaz. These are the finest topazes in the world. Now, this is different from citrine, so don't buy a citrine. We will not sell it. We call citrine as citrine, and we call topaz as topaz. And that will be also on your bills. We never call topaz as citrine or citrine as topaz. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful gemstones. Um, uh, it's also a non-porous stone. It lasts many, many years. Over to you, Babita. Coming to tourmalin, no gemstone has such richness in color variations as tourmalin. Known in ant antiquity in Mediterranean area, the Dutch imported it in 1703 from Sri Lanka to Europe. They gave the stone a Sinhalese name tourmalin, which originally means packet of colored gemstones. Talking about turquoise, turquoise is amongst the oldest gemstone known to man. Throughout time, this stone was honored as a symbol of wisdom and nobility. To some cultures, it was even considered as symbol of immortality. Excellent jewelry styles make bold statements. To add a little to uh, your uh, comments, Babita, sure. I'd like to share something. Isn't it? When you were talking about tourmalin, the tourmalin is one of the world's most popular gemstones. The color names makes the language of tourmalin gems simple for jewelry consumers. When you are talking about the red tourmalin, they are sometimes sold as the rubellites. The blue tourmalins as the indicolites. The green tourmalin as the chrome tourmalins. And so there are examples like this, which we also call it as the pink tourmalin, the purple tourmalin, the yellow tourmalin. And the most popular of all them is this, the watermelon tourmalin. And that's a beautiful eardrops that you happen to see on your screens. This has a pink interior and a green rind, just like a slice of water tourmaline over there. A beautiful pair of drops that's available at Krishna Chetty and Sons, Krishna Chetty Group of Jewelers. Thank you. Now to tell you something, you, you would probably be looking at one of the prettiest sites in Brunei, Brazil. And this is a palace of the Prince of Orange. This palace has a very choicey collections of pictures and furniture and has been the decorations of most magnificent over here. Gliding and splendid hangings may be seen anywhere here and the room is linen wholly or in part with rich marble and the beautiful furniture as abounded with ornaments of the most beautiful kind and the costly minerals of which makes the most remarkable. There is one large vase that you happen to see and this vase is of the Malachite. This here is the greatest attraction by the elegance of their form as well as the material there. The second slide that you happen to see here is the American Golden Topaz. This American Golden Topaz is about 11.8 kgs is a rough. It was purchased by a rock hound hobbyist of America. And it took about two years for him to completely cut the stone and give them this enormous size 
this finished stone has an extraordinary beautiful product with a perfect cushion cut having about 172 facets and a combination of good uniform color and clarity and it is a 22,892 carats in weight making it the largest faceted topaz in the world. This gemstone is now on display at the National Museum, Museum of Natural History of Smithsonian Institute. Along with this, you could see the other two uncut topazes. One is a 32 kilo kgs on your left, the Lindsay topaz, and the 50 kgs of Freeman topaz on your right. The next is what we are looking at the geode. Not even scientists are 100% sure exactly how these amethyst geodes are formed or how any geodes form the geodes. These rocks seem to be plain on the outside, but when opened, reveal a cavity in the middle filled with beautiful crystals. An amethyst geode is a hollow rock with amethyst crystals lining the inner walls. So first, the cavity has got to be formed. The first step is the natural process where the lava gets cooled. It's like a gas bubble inside, like the cavities that we usually have with the carbonated soda, things like that, where you have these bubbles coming up. The cooling lava hardens completely before filling it, the outer crop, giving it a cavity. And these cavities then get filled with the silica-rich liquid that contains traces of iron over time, this liquid forms crystals which are six-sided pyramids of amethyst. These crystals have a color that ranges from light lilac to deep purple. And these are formed when there's a trace element called iron inside them. And moving next is the pink tourmaline snuff bottles of the 18th and 19th century. It was a practice of snuff taking very much in the provinces of the fashionable Qing dynasty. The pocket sized bottles would be made of precious material and decorated in a manner befitting the carrier. Over the centuries, the designs would become more elaborate and the snuff bottles would be regarded as objects of high value and exchanged to mark social ties are presented as gifts to the imperial court. Although snuff taking eventually fell out of fashion, bottles continued to be sought, out, sought after as collector's piece. You know, Experience. Yeah, I, I wanted to just say that this is also a Chinese uh, antique. Uh, as much as that country has produced some of these fine uh, carvings. Uh, our director, Mr. Chaitanya Kotha, was uh, last time in, in, in the King Dao, uh, about 200 uh, miles away from King Dao to look at emerald mines and pearl farms. And uh, now I think, uh, Chaitanya, you won't be able to go to China anymore. There's no more sapphire my sourcing from China, neither pearls from China. So your trips to China would, <laughs> would not be there now. Uh, do you have something to say, Chaitanya? No, no, I agree. And, you know, I think it's uh, it's quite amazing how, uh, you know, I, I do agree. We should not be looking at this right now. And it's it's good stuff right now. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the country comes first and we should not participate with businesses or countries that do harm to us. Uh, we, we all have suffered enough on this. Okay. Vishwanath. Uh, there's one question uh, from the customer. We hope we will answer it. Uh, this Pukraj, is it a yellow topaz? No, Pukraj is also a corundum, which means it's a sapphire. Therefore, it is not a topaz. Uh, it's also a very benevolent stone. It's a very beautiful stone in its deeper colors. And when it is well cut and when it has a good saturation, right through the stone and if it has um, uh, a nice uh, you know well proportioned cutting 
it it shines so well and it shows off the color in any piece even if it is a diamond necklace or a gold necklace it doesn't matter on white gold or any kind of metal it shows out so beautifully it's a very benevolent stone especially in india because sapphires are quite often recommended by astrologers all across india and sometimes even around the world and sapphires are very recommended quite often between 3 carats to 20 carats to 30 carats depending on how uh, what your star signs then your um, you know your planetary positions are our astrologers will be able to give you guidance on that so there are two uh, couple of questions yes Vishwanath, can you just uh, read out that? Uh, sure, certainly. Uh, yeah, some Alexander uh, rates are green Alex, under fluorescent. Is that, that the question? Was that was answered. I hope we but, answered but, Mr. J. George. Yeah. Yeah, we, we did. Custom. Yeah, so as I said, Alexander rates are, uh, you know, are also made by man, but there is adequate uh, test uh, reports that we can differentiate all of these gemstones. There's no chance of misrepresentation in today's scientific world. Everything is uh, visible. A couple more questions on the WhatsApps as well as emails. Um, if there are any, if you can unmute everybody, Lokesh, if anybody has questions, they can always ask. Okay, I realized jadeite jade was missing out through very precious stone. Is it a popular in India? Good question, Mr. George. Um, jadeite has two varieties, nephrite and jadeite. Nephrite and jadeite are both uh, coming in from, uh, jadeite comes from Burma, which is Myanmar. Uh, nephrite comes from China. Not very popular in India. Uh, maybe because uh, it's the carving style, it's a Chinese carving style, so it's not too much in India. We don't import them in India. However, uh, it's interesting to know that all the jade that people say that it is in China is actually not Chinese. Jadeite is always, almost all of them is uh, mined in Myanmar and Burma. They're, they're rocks of green and very hard, extremely difficult. Um, if you remember, that we showed you uh, Aventurine Quartz Ganesha, which is about three feet, four feet tall. Um, it's made for, uh, you know, a beautiful Ganesha idol. That uh, was wanted to be made in uh, jade, but we refused to take the order because first you cannot find such a large jade piece uh, of mineral and we cannot carve it so easily. It's extremely hard. The one that you're seeing now here is a ruby. It's a, it's a ruby uh, carving of Ganesha, which is about five and a half feet high, a four, and a, four and a half to five and a half feet high. Um, it's available at one of our showrooms. So it's very interesting to see that, um, you know, the, the, the kind of variety is so huge and you must create a taste and a liking for all of these beautiful gems. Not all of them are expensive, but they make wonderful jewelry. Uh, is there any sure. question? Other questions? Yes. There is another question from Manika Prabhu, uh, asking yeah. how does Canadian jade compare to the Chinese jade in quality and value? Well, very interesting question. Um, there is jade produced in New Zealand and in Canada. Um, they're very, very beautiful. They're called, New Zealand is called Maori Jades, M-A-O-R-I, I think it's the Maori tribes there that you, it's named after them. Very, very beautiful jade. Um, it's carved there or we make them into jewelry. A small import, no different, um, uh, no different between all of these. They're all coming from Mother Earth. Um, small differences in the composition, but they're all the same. Jadeite jade, nephrite jade, that's the difference, but otherwise, whether they come from Canada, New Zealand, China, or Burma, they're all the same uh, by and large. There'll be some color difference, some shape difference, saturation difference, but they're all equally beautiful. If there are any other questions, uh, feel free to ask us any questions. We are, we, we, are, uh, we are almost exactly on time, 6.20. We expected to last about seven, uh, 75 minutes. I think we are about 18 minutes now. Um, there's another question. 
are oh, wow mr george <laughs> you are a connoisseur i can see are patparadasha sapphires comparable in value to blue sapphires oh well <laughs> you've raised a wonderful question here patparadasha sapphires are the world's finest sapphires there are just a few of them in the world we probably sell half a dozen in a year that's it they are so rare we did we don't get enough of them they are the most patparadasha patpara is the the lotus uh, in sinhalese in sri lankan language so when you when a when the lotus blooms the inside of the lotus whatever the color is that's the patparadasha color of a sapphire so it's the most beautiful sapphire i am not sure if we have anything in stock at this point of time but they are so beautiful um but of course we do collect them time to time and um we'll we we'll let you know mr george whenever we are having something on our hand any other questions from anyone feel free i have been to your showroom uh and your collection is really impressive I have recommended a visit to my friends thank you thank you mr george um spend time with us i mean our showrooms are like a little museum they are little you the more you spend time the more you will see because everything is not on display there's so much to see that you cannot see all of it all the time most of our clients we tell them don't don't spend more than one at a time it will take you multiple visits through the year for you to come whenever you feel free of course uh, with whatever covid uh, situation now uh, we hold the highest hygiene standards um, fortunately we've been through the plague in uh, 1898 we've been through the um, world war 1 uh, the our history of records show we have had lot of disruptions the spanish flu in 1918 the world war 2 we've had a lot of pandemics before i hope that we all sail through this we all all of you who are on this webinar we wish you all the very best we we want everybody to be safe um the world will go on but we hope with the least amount of disruptions we have another question how can i match the alexandrite earrings i have well if you give us the alexandrite uh, let me tell you something that's happening constantly we are looking out for new mining mines in the world so a couple of mines have opened up in africa which never used to produce alexandrite if you remember alexandrite the name comes from alexander uh, the the tsar alexander of russia it was the largest producer of alexandrites after it's closed down and it's just parodic mining now not much uh, we have an african mine that produces it i will have to try to match your stone if you give us a good picture of the stone we'll try and match it for a ring or a earring or a necklace whatever you need give us a time everything that we ask for in this world in the world of minerals is only time we will give you almost anything because we have phenomenal reach from all parts of almost all continents and gem producing countries we have some of the finest associates with us who cut products for us who source for us who mine products so um like i said earlier chaitanya has been to china shreyas is uh, and the other director has been to uh, the kukuba pedi mines in australia and uh, we i i'm on the world diamond council so we go to mines in south africa botswana namibia so therefore we have a lot of uh, links in the world we can try and find you but give us time but don't hesitate to little bit insist sometimes um sales people when we are sometimes they may say it's not available but insist and tell us that you want it you say look i need it and then we will give it to you sometimes you have to demand from us we will give it to you okay if there are no more questions i think we should wind up if uh, chaitanya you want to give a little word of thanks or uh, uh, vishnath you want to talk about this uh, the qr codes quickly so certainly there's a video and uh... i would like to as we said we would like to thank everybody experience the intense natural color of champagne canary diamonds visit ckcjewelers.com to get your pair delivered in 3 working days subject to prior sale in 
fact, in fact, that particular ring got sold yesterday. Am I right, Chaitanya? Yes, it actually got sold yesterday. We mm -hmm. actually made this. Uh, it took us almost about, uh, I think, almost one and a half months to have it actually made because it was. Uh, it, it took us a while to make and actually sold within no time. Yeah, we made the video and then immediately before we could have this webinar, that uh, that ring got sold. But we will we have other products which are beautiful. Well, um, now this is for our patrons over here. Uh, we thank you all for your time that you have taken to make this session wonderful, more exciting. And a few of you would have missed out the previous sessions. Uh, we have a QR code that has been uh, shared with you where you could go back, check on our sessions on this gemstone care and history about Sri Krishna Chetty group of jewelers. Yes, you can just point your camera to these QR codes and it will take you to the YouTube channels and as well as our websites, which you can at any time. But otherwise, just get to www.ckcjewelers.com and all our services are available there. And also our blogs, read our blogs. They're very interesting blogs, a lot of nice articles, including whether a sanitizer helps you uh, or harms your jewelry. I won't speak about it, but you can read it on, on the blog. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.